This viscast deals with constructing a wave equation from some given information in a diagram. Please pause the video and read through the question carefully. The question is asking us to find the constants in this wave equation, a, k and omega, and the sign, whether it's positive or negative, for the travelling wave which is described in the figure shown. The travelling wave is for a string and this image shows two pictures. The solid line curve is a picture of the wave on the string, a snapshot in time, say t initial, and the dotted line is also a picture in time, some final time later. We're told that the time between those two images is 4.0 milliseconds. We're also given a bit more information. We're told that if we look at a crest of the wave at point A here, then at 4 milliseconds after propagation, that point A has moved across to here, and that distance that those crests are separated is now 6.0 centimetres. We're also given a numerical value for the height, which is 6 millimetres. That's how far the string oscillations are extending. We're given the wave equation y of xt is equal to a sine of kx plus or minus omega t. And we're told that this equation can describe this wave. It's not the most general equation for a troubling wave though, because we might have a phase constant plus phi in there, which really describes what's going on for the initial conditions of the wave. So how do we know what that phi is? Why is it not appearing in that equation? Well, to look at that, let's consider the point on the axis where x and y cross. So at that point there, x is equal to 0, and we know that the t is equal to my initial time. I don't know exactly what that initial time is. It would be helpful to be able to set that initial time to 0, because all we really care about is this time difference for the wave propagation. So if we set that initial time to be 0, that tells me that my displacement of my wave in the y direction should be a times the sine. If x is 0, that first term is 0, plus or minus omega t. If t initial is 0, that's also 0, plus some phase angle. Now since the sine function is 0, therefore that phi must be equal either 0 or 2 pi. And so what's happened here is we've just set that to be equal to zero. So that's where that's gone. So after just mentioning that, let's get back to the task at hand, which is to ascertain what a and k and omega are and the correct choice of sign. Well, looking at my diagram here, I can see that my amplitude is defined as the maximum displacement of my wave. So it's the height from the crest to the point that I'm oscillating about, and that's equal to h over 2. So my amplitude is h over 2, we have a numerical value of 6 millimetres, so half that value is 3 millimetres is the amplitude, or in SI units it's 0 0.003 metres. Secondly, the wave number k, how can we get that? Well, remembering the wave number k is 2 pi divided by the wavelength, if I measure the disk distance here, because I'm plotting y versus x, then the x-axis describes a length. We're told that the tick marks for that length are separated by 10 centimetres. So in fact, this is 10 centimetres, 20 centimetres, 30 centimetres, 40 centimetres from this point here to this point here. That's the same 40 centimetres we can go, sorry, 10, 20, 30, 40 centimetres. So my wavelength is equal to 40 centimetres. So my wave number is 2 pi divided by 0 0.4 to put that into metres. And that's equal to uh, 5 times pi, or as a numerical value, 15.71 per metre. So we've got our amplitude so far, and we have our wave number. What about our angular frequency omega? Recalling that my angular frequency is 2 pi times my frequency in hertz, is there a way of reading off the frequency from this graph? Well, not directly. 
if this graph had a horizontal axis which was the time then the corresponding horizontal distance between successive peaks would be the period so we can't quite use that but we are given a bit of additional information we're told that the wave travels six centimeters in four milliseconds so we're actually told what the velocity of the wave is what the group velocity is so that distance divided by that time interval tells me I travel six centimeters 0 0.06 in four milliseconds 0 004 seconds that tells me my wave is traveling at 15 meters per second how does that help me when I want to find out the frequency well the velocity is also given by the frequency times the wavelength which is also we can rewrite this as my frequency is omega divided by 2 pi multiplied by my wavelength which is 2 pi divided by k from up here k is equal to 2 pi over lambda so lambda is equal to 2 pi divided by k the 2 pi's cancel so we can see that my velocity is equal to omega over k I wanted to find omega so omega is just going to be equal to k times my velocity I know my k is at 15.71 multiplied by 15 gives me 235 and so that will be uh, in radians per second because I've kept everything in SI units so so far I've managed to find both a k and omega what about the correct choice in front of my um, omega function so is it plus or is it minus well you can either sort of commit to memory that if my wave is moving in a positive x direction then it's going to be minus omega t and if my wave is moving in the negative x direction then uh, it's going to be plus omega t so you could recall that or you could actually just work out what's going on here and what I want to do is take a look at two points on my graph here and let's take a look at this initial point here and what I want to say is that we saw that at this initial point at x equals 0 and t equals 0 that what was inside my sine function the sine of kx plus or minus omega t what was inside that sine function had to be the sine eventually of 0 in order for my displacement y to be 0 at some time later at this point here what we know is that what's inside that sine function because t is always a positive number as you know, time increases positive that means that omega t that number there is going to be positive if we also look um, how this is plotted x increases as we go to the right so this point here is going to also be a positive number we set the origin to be zero that means that kx is also a positive number so in order for what's inside the bracket here to be zero it must be that I put a minus sign in here so a positive number minus a positive number that could equal zero as long as kx is equal to omega t and that's exactly what's happening here as time is increasing my wave moves along to some new point such that kx is always equal to omega t so the wave arrives at that point at the right time for what's inside my sine function here to be zero so that the um, displacement is zero so my mathematical function y of x and t which describes this wave can be written as 0.003 my amplitude times the sine of k times x which is 15.71 times x minus omega 235 times t